So go with me for the word for today. It's in Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel chapter 47. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today. So important. Ezekiel 47 verse 1. He said, then he brought me back to the door of the temple. And there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple. And in verse 3 it says, and when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The water came up to my ankles. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters, and the water came up to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through. The water came up to my waist. And then in verse 5 says, again, he measured 1,000 and it was a river. Say with me, a river that I could not cross. For the water was too deep. Say, the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. A river that could not be crossed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river go, will live. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because your presence is here from the beginning of this service. I thank you for what you're about to do. Prepare our hearts, our minds to allow you to do it. Prepare me, Father, to speak not my words, but your words, Jesus. Amen and amen. Walking in the Spirit means to be led by the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit means that we allow the Spirit to take us deeper and deeper into the things of the Spirit. Let me ask you a question. Are you happy? Are you happy with your spiritual life? Are, are you there yet? Do you think you already have reached the level in your spiritual life that Christ wants for you? I mean, the answer is obvious. Most of us would say, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not there yet, Pastor. I, must, I have much more to experience. I have, I have to go deeper. So then, if you are not there yet, what is holding you back? Let me ask the same question to these people here. If you are not there yet in your spiritual life, who's holding you back? Making, making you think a little bit. What is preventing us from getting much deeper in our spiritual life, actually? We, we can come up with a few excuses, a few explanations, that bogus explanations, but really, 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 really. Because God's plan for us is that we continue to deepen our relationship with him. God's plan for us is that we continue to get deeper in our faith with him. God's plans for you and I is that we continue to be obedient to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Allowing the Holy Spirit to take us to new areas. Areas that the Spirit longs to show us. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. He says, I has not seen, not ear heard. Nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So oh, I long for that. I want more of that. I, I, it doesn't matter how deep you are, how, how, how close you are to God. You, you, you got to want more. 
more of him, more of God. Because you will never end up discovering everything that is about God. We all need more of him. I think God has a spiritual banquet for each and every one of us. But we must be willing to sit at the table. We must be willing to eat the food that he has prepared for us. There is spiritual river. There is a river that flows from the very throne of God. But we must allow the Holy Spirit to take us by the hand to the deepest part of that river. Paul exclaimed when he was confronted with the richness of God. He said, oh, the depth of the richness, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. I tell you, I long for that. I live for that. My brother and my sister, there is a much deeper area in the river of God for us to discover, for us to explore. My hope and my prayer is at the end of this sermon, you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, to take you there. So you can let go of some of the things that are hold you, holding you back. Relationships and things and attitudes. I'm, I'm, a, I'm speaking to somebody here. This spiritual area that I'm talking about has nothing to do with the volume of my voice. It has nothing to do with, with the, the, the eloquence of the speaker. Whether the speaker is too tall or too short. He has a lot of hair or... Amen. Amen. But by faith, I know when I get to heaven, oh baby, I'm going to have a lot of hair. Receive that word, guys. <laughs> I'm going to be handsome. I don't, then I don't need to hold this. Suck it up anymore. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with this area of the spirit. It has nothing to do with the, the music, which is the music is beautiful. But it has nothing to do with that. It's beyond that. Beyond human emotions. It's an area of submission to God. It's an area that we can't go by ourselves. But the spirit, the spirit has to take us. See, I believe that we are in the last days. Are you with me here? We are in the last days. We're seeing many signs that we are in the last days. And we are in the days where the last push for soul wins is going to happen. The Holy Spirit is pushing to win more and more souls. Because we're getting to the last days. I tell you a little bit about our trip to Cuba. We, we, we left Cuba in 1980. Um, 37 years ago, almost. Never went back. We left under some circumstances that uh, the church was persecuted. You couldn't speak about the name of Jesus outside the church, only inside the church. Some of us went to, sent to concentration camps to cut sugar cane just because we were Christians. That's all. I'm talking about young kids. I was 18 when I went in. When I got out, I was 20. So when we left, we, we, that's what we remember. The church persecuted, uh, very limited. The churches were um, a few people only in the church. People were running away from the church. So now we go back with a little bit of apprehension, logically. And then the devil starts speaking to you and saying, they're going to do to you the same thing they did. <laughs> but guess what? We said, devil, get out of my face. <laughs> devil, get out of my face. You are defeated. We're going to preach the gospel no matter what. Even what, what can Castro do to me? I don't care. So 
To make the long story short, we, we went there. We gave several uh, couple seminars in, the, in, in different churches, families, family conferences, uh, pastors' conference, and, and that was beautiful. A lot of people were, were touched by the teachings and the preachings that we did. But, uh, but the, the, what impacted us the most was in the personal level. See, people that we left that were in the government, they were members of the Communist Party. And to be a member of the Communist Party and be part of the government, you can't believe in God. You can't. They, that doesn't mix. At least when we left 37 years ago. Oh, then here we are. We go to see, pray for the daughter of my, my, my wife's best friend from high school. She's a big shot in the government, uh, on national television and all that. So we pray for her daughter and then I started witnessing to her. And she broke down in tears and she started crying. And my wife was in the kitchen witnessing to the nanny. And I told my wife, hey, get over here because your, your, your friend is going to receive Jesus. She said, hold on a second, there's another one here. And they both received Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit at work. There's nothing that I said. There's nothing that we said. It's just the Holy Spirit. He's preparing the hearts of the people. They're so hungry. Hungry to receive the word. God is doing something great, church. Then we kept on preaching. And then in the, la the last Sunday, the day before we left, we preached in this church. And her cousin is a professor of the university, member, member of the Communist Party, big shot. When we left him, he was so communist, so atheist that he didn't have room for God in his mind. He, his wife received the Lord, but he wouldn't. But he was present while I was preaching in this church. And his son as well in the back. I make an altar calling. A lot of people responded to the altar calling to receive the Lord. And guess who came crawling to the altar? <laughs> Mr. Frank. Mr. Frank Ordas. And he received the Lord with tears. God is doing something great. There is so much hunger for the word of the Lord. So much hunger for the gospel there. Now the, the story doesn't end there. His son drove into church that day. And he sat in the back. He's too a uh, physician, a professor, big shot, communist, all of that. He sat in the back. And then after the church service was over, we went back to back home and we say uh, farewells before we we travel back to the United States the next day and his son turns to me and he said when you, when you come back the next time I have a couple of questions to ask you he said oh no no next time you're going to ask me the questions now <laughs> so I took him to the next room and answer a few tough questions that he asked me because he had some, some questions. And all of a sudden he broke down in tears and started crying. And he received the Lord. He said to me, do you know what impacted me the most? Something you said from the pulpit. He said, he said you, you have a, a void in your heart that only Jesus can fill. You've been trying to fill it with different things, but only Jesus can fill that. He said, that touched me. So you better believe that the Holy Spirit is well alive. Moving in the midst of the people. It's moving in this church as well. I believe the last revival is here. But for that to happen. We need to stop eating baby food. Baby food is not good. I mean, it's good for a season, but that's it. No more baby food, please. And that's a decision we need to make.
The revival is here. Some people can be revived even more. I mean, they're already so on fire that if they get more revived, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Some of these guys here, forget it. <laughs> you can't go near them, you know. <laughs> revival is when all of us, it gets contagious. And, it, it, and I believe God is, wants to do it in this church. And he's about to do it in this church. You better believe that. So God is calling this whole church, church of all nations, to a much deeper level. The text we read, it said that the Spirit brought him to the door of the temple. I tell you, today you are in the right place. You are in the temple. You are in the place. You are here in church of all nations. God brought you here. You didn't decide one day, I'm going to come from Ecuador and I'm going to go to church of all nations. You didn't make a decision, I'm living in, in Seattle, I'm going to go to Church of All Nations. I'm going to go to Florida because it's warmer. No, you, you probably, that, that motivated you to do it. But the Holy Spirit was behind all of that. And now you are here and this is your place. And this is the place where God wants to use you. This is the place where God wants to bless you. So you didn't plan this. Ezekiel was a, a prophet. Led by the Spirit. The Bible said then in Ezekiel 2.2 2, that he said among his feet, took him by the hair, lifted him up between, between heaven and earth, brought him visions of God to Jerusalem. That's in 8.3. Oh, we need more people, more prophets like, like Ezekiel. Uh, more, more people like Ezekiel that move when the Spirit moves them. People that won't move because somebody offended them. People that won't move because somebody took their seat. Or, or because the rugs are too dark or too light. Or because the AC is too cold or too... Well, it's usually we're pretty cold here. We need more people like Ezekiel. Anyway, in this vision, he showed him a river that was flowing from under the threshold of the temple. This is the river of God. This is the river where the Holy Spirit longs to take us. And my prayer is that you allow the Holy Spirit to take you to that place. And I give you five levels of this river of God. Number one is outside the river. Outside the river. Tell your neighbor. He said outside the river. That is the place for the people that want to see. They just want to see. They enjoy seeing others under the power of God. But, but, but they don't want to get in under the power of God. They go from church to church, from event to event, seminar to seminar, and they see it all. But they don't get in. They're outsiders. These are the storytellers. I hope we have no one here in that category. Ezekiel was on the outside of the river until the Spirit told him, get in. So tell your neighbor, get in the river. <laughs> then in verse 3 he says, and when the man went up to the east... With the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The water came up to my ankles. That's the other level, up to the ankles. In this level, I'm saying I'm planted in the river of God. 
You know, it took me a while to, to, to get planted in the river of God. Because I come up from another background, another Pentecostal background. When I came to this church 25 years, 20, I don't know, 20 something years, I used to sit somewhere there. And I saw how you guys, you Pentecostal worship, you, you lift your hands. I, you know, I struggle with that. It looks simple now, and now I'm free, but it looks simple. You know, during that time, I was like, <laughs> it wouldn't go up, man. I struggled with that for a while. I was outside the river saying, what are these guys doing? Raising their hands and all that and jumping and dancing. Oh, we don't do those things. In this level, I'm saying I'm planted in the river of God, but I'm also saying I'm still in control. Do you feel me? It's good that I'm in the river of God, but I'm saying I'm still in control. Yet the benefits of the river are not in the shallow waters. They're in the depth. Go with me to Luke 5, verse 3. He says, then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Church, the multitudes like shallow waters. The multitudes like they don't enjoy the deep. They like shallow waters. But the benefits of the river are in the depth. Why? You know. Continue to read in Luke 5. He said, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a cash. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and got nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I, I will let down the net. And when they, they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. The blessing was on the deep, was not in the shallow. The multitudes weren't present in the Mount of Transfiguration, just a few people that wanted more of Jesus. The multitudes weren't present at the grave after the resurrection, just a few people that wanted more of Jesus. The multitudes didn't see him to do miracles just a few that wanted more of Jesus. The multitudes were in present at Gethsemane. Just a few people that wanted more of Jesus. The multitudes, multitudes didn't receive the Holy Spirit in the upper room. Just a few people that wanted more of Jesus. That wanted to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. So there is a time for you to be in shallow waters. And there is a time to leave the multitudes behind. To leave the group behind. So you have a friend with you all that time. All of a sudden, he doesn't want to go deep. Just say, I'm sorry. I'm going deeper. Amen. Tell the person next to you, what are you waiting for? Waiting? Keep on moving forward. Go deeper. <clears throat> the next level. It's in verse 4. It says, Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The water came up to my knees. This is the knee level. This is the level where prayer starts making a difference. We can't go deeper than this unless we use our knees. Unless we are on our knees, we can't go deeper than that. This level represents brokenness, repentance, submission to God. 
uh, at this level, I'm looking to give complete control of my life to the Holy Spirit. It represents the believer that knows in part the depths of the Spirit, but it still wants to be in control. You know a little bit about the, the depths of the Spirit. You're in prayer. You're a spiritual person, but, but you know what? You don't want to let go of some things. You can say, ouch. It's okay. You don't want to let go of some things. It's like you're dragging this ang anchor. You can't go deeper. It's time to let go. Tell your neighbor, it's time to let go. Now we come to the level up to the loins, the waist. Verse 4, again he measured 1,000 and brought me through. The water came out to my waist, my loins. At this level, we have spent some time on our knees. And we're walking pretty much in the spirit. At this level, however, is where we must finally achieve the victory over the flesh. The loins. Do you feel me? A bunch of temptations are around this area here. Hello. It's only me. Is it me alone? I hope it's not me only. <laughs> so the battle is on our knees, but this is the level where we say it's going to stop now. This is the level where, 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 when I'm going to turn off my television, when I'm going to throw away my computer. This is the level when I'm going to say no to pornography. This is the level when I'm going to say no to that lady that is trying to date me and I'm already married. This is it. This is the level where I'm going to say no to this relationship that is ungodly. This is it. Want to go deeper in the spirit? There's a cost to it. The cost is holiness. The first name of the spirit is holy. So what are you expecting? <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> but in this level, watch this. It's so deep already. We're, we're up to here. It's like, I don't know if you've been in a river with a strong current or in the ocean and it's, it's beating you here. And, and sometimes you're like... You lose control. All of a sudden, the water covers you, and you are swimming for a little while. You're swimming in the river. You feel me? You're swimming in this river, and all of a sudden, you say, oh, no, no, no. I need to be back in control. And you just stand to your feet and say, no, no. Up to the waist only. But the, what the Holy Spirit wants us is to let go of everything and keep on swimming and keep on going. In this river. Sometimes we lose our balance, but it's good to lose the balance in this case. We need to lose, be on balance. And let the river carry us. Tell your neighbor, let the river take you. And add this, it's going to be good. So we get to the, the level number five, the deepest level. Verse five said, again, he measured 1,000 and it was a river that I could not cross. For the water was too deep, water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. And in verse nine said, and it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river go, will live. Life. It's on the deep. You want life? You want the blessings of God? It's in the deep. 
It's not in the shallow. When you go deep, you let go of some things. Some relationships that are holding you back. And you decide to allow and give control, complete control to the Holy Spirit. That's the goal of the Spirit. And that's my prayer today for all of us. That we can let go of all these things that are holding us back. And finally go swim in this river of God that wants to heal us. Want to heal our families. Want to heal our community. Want to heal our nation. Want to bring back your rebellious son home. Heal your marriage. That's what God wants to do. And that is only found on the deep. Stand to your feet. Father, thank you for your word. Your word is wonderful. Thank you because your desire is to take us deeper in, your, in our relationship with you. Thank you because your desire is to teach us the deepest things of the spirit. And with that, all the blessings and all the life and all the healing that comes with it, Father. We praise you for what you have done in this church. Holy Spirit. Start moving right now even more. At this very end and touch every life right here, Father. Jesus. How many of you would say, Pastor, I want to go deeper. Let me see your hands. Oh, so many, so many, so many, so many, so many. Thank you, Jesus.